Mike. He is from uh, Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba, Canada, uh, and uh, he's joined our team over four years ago now. And Chris is an amazing physiotherapist, and uh, he's got lots of great information for you tonight. Um, and first, we'd like to acknowledge uh, another team member that's here, um, and that's uh, Chris Willman. Uh, you can kind of wave to the crowd if you want there, Chris. She's an amazing um, uh, physio that works with our team and always supports all our presentations. So thanks for coming out tonight, Chris. Um, and if you guys have any questions tonight, I want to make sure that you type them in the chat box. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, uh, you can click on the chat box and it opens usually on the right side of your screen. On the bottom right hand side, it'll say, just make sure it's defaulted to everyone. So it'll say um, to everyone. So everyone can kind of see the questions that are coming in. And then you can just type in your question right in the bottom. And uh, depending on the question, we might stop kind of halfway through and answer some of the questions or we might just leave them all to the end. Uh, we'll just kind of see how the presentation flows. But don't be afraid if you have a burning question to, uh, you know, to uh, put it right in there. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I see Jan's already put something in there. Thank you. I'm glad you're happy to be here too, Jan. And uh, so we'll, we'll move ahead with that. And uh, let's see what else do I have to talk about here tonight. Um, yeah, so basically, Chris is really passionate about keeping people moving to stay healthy and live a higher quality of life. He really strives to get you moving faster and feeling better. And that's our slogan in Nose Creek Sport Physiotherapy. So I want you all to enjoy the journey tonight through foot pain and how to fix it. Uh, and he will help you reduce or eliminate your foot pain. Um, so I will pass the baton over to you, Chris, and you can take it away. All right. Okay, so let's just jump right into it here. So today's agenda, we're going to go through a few things, starting off with some common foot conditions. Uh, we're going to get into a bit of the biomechanics and how the whole chain from your feet up to your hips and low back can be affected. Um, we're going to talk a bit about orthotics, shock wave, and then at the halfway point, we'll take a little bit of a break so that you guys can grab some equipment at home. And then we're going to get into some practical advice, so some exercises that you can start doing today to help uh, with your pain. Um, and then at the very end, we're gonna do a little bit of a draw. So we'll do a draw for a massage, I believe. And then we'll leave some time at the end for, for questions. So I'll try and get this all done in a very timely manner so that everything's done by seven and you can go out and enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay. So first things that we're gonna talk about are different types of pain. And so we see a lot of foot pain coming to the clinic and can be characterized by a bunch of different ways. So some people have sharp pain, um, which could be a bit more reminiscent of plantar fasciitis, which we'll get into. You could also have uh, hot pain. So if you have uh, a neuropathy, so we'll, we'll talk a bit about what that is or vascular changes. So uh, uh, blood flow issues causing some of that pain. The first type of pain that we're gonna talk about is plantar fasciitis. So plantar fasciitis is essentially inflammation of the plantar fascia. And if you leave that for a long enough time period or you let it get worse, uh, you can start to develop micro tears in the plantar fascia. So essentially, if we look at that picture in the bottom right, we've got a, a diagram of a foot and the plantar fascia attaches onto the forefoot and then down on the heel. It helps to support your arch. So with some of these causes like increased activity levels, or if you excessively pronate, so some of you might be familiar with that term, we'll dive into that later on, uh, that can cause plantar fasciitis. Tight calves, I think this is really interesting. And some of you probably know if you have tight calves, that can also cause plantar fasciitis. And a bit of a fun tidbit, but it causes that because it has an excessive pull on that heel bone, and that's gonna affect the plantar fascia. And then I put on here older age, because as we age, we start to have our arches collapse. So the, the big arch, the arch that everyone knows is that medial longitudinal arch. So that's the, the kind of classic arch going from the heel to the forefoot. And so as our ligaments uh, grow lax as we age, we can just get that arch collapsing and that puts more tension on the plantar fascia. The next common condition we'll talk about is metatarsalgia. Um, just as a funny side note, I, for the first three years practicing at Nose Creek um, and my, my years going through university, I always called it metatarsalgia. And then Christine, who's here, uh, said something and I didn't realize it was metatarsalgia. So it's actually metatarsalgia. So that's my, my fault to anyone that attended in the past. But this is essentially an umbrella term for forefoot pain. 
And so you can start to develop this if you are in, uh, participating in high impact activities, especially with improper footwear, so non-supportive footwear. Much like plantar fasciitis, with older age, we can get the arch collapsing. Now, this is a different arch and a lesser known arch. We've actually got three in our foot. And so we've got one that spans our whole forefoot. That's called our transverse arch. So just like the other arch, as we age, those ligaments can grow lax and we get collapsing of that arch. And that can cause pain. There are a multitude of other causes of metatarsalgia, um, including gait imbalances, so how you're walking, if you're walking differently, maybe you're compensating for another injury or issue. And then we put in this slide because last presentation, we had someone ask about neuropathies. And so neuropathies essentially uh, refers to a loss of nerve function. And there's a lot of reasons why that can happen. So mechanically, an, an issue that some of you may know the term of is a disc herniation. And that's in the back, we have discs, and those can push into nerve roots and cause pain down the leg, known as sciatica. So that's one cause of a neuropathy. But there are many medical causes too. So diabetes, uh, receiving chemotherapy treatment, and sometimes even medication. So when it comes to physio for this sort of condition, I'll just kind of make a, an aside and mention this right now. Um, but when we have a physical injury, we're trying to address the root cause. And we can definitely have an effect on that disc herniation. We cannot change the fact that you've undergone chemotherapy or taking medications. However, we can do exercises and evidence has been shown that doing certain exercises like balancing and strengthening your legs can help with the symptoms of the neuropathy. So we might not be able to uh, completely eliminate it, but we can improve how you're functioning with it. Okay, so those are some common types of foot pain. Next, we're gonna talk about, um, well, we're just gonna jump into this. So what step do you guys think would cause the most pain here? And the answer is every step. So essentially when you're dealing with plantar fasciitis metatarsalgia from heel strike to toeing off, it can be quite painful. So it's not just with the heel strike, it's the whole strike of the foot and as you're loading your foot. So I think we've got a little bit of a quiz. So if anyone wants to jump out and, or, or they just wanna type um, write their answer in the chat, um, you can do that. So my first question for you guys to see who's paying attention is, is plantar fasciitis an overuse syndrome? Blair, is anyone, uh, has anyone answered in the chat? I can't see. Yeah, so June said true. Oh, and Christina said true. Nice. There you go, good Perfect. job guys. Next question is, would a modification of activity improve heel pain? Kind of a tricky one. Just what do you think? Because I don't think we really specifically mentioned this. June says it should be true. And it is true. Hey, good job, June. So doing modifications can definitely help. So if you've just increased your running and you've started to notice the foot pain, dialing it back at least temporarily just to build up that load tolerance in your tissues uh, can help, among other modifications and exercises, which we'll talk about. Okay, so this is a really cool uh, picture here that demonstrates the, the difference of the biomechanics when you're wearing high heels versus regular shoes. So if we look at figure A there on the left-hand side, we can see our kind of center of balance. So where we're loading our joints. And as if we start at that ankle, we're going to be loading right through the middle of the knee, through the middle of the hip, right nicely through the spine, the shoulder, and then into the neck. So what happens when we wear high heels is obviously in, in figure B, you can't stand like that. So you're gonna compensate. And what'll end up happening is we're putting a lot more pressure on our forefoot, our knees are forward, our hips, our center of gravity is not really passing right through the middle of the joints. And that's gonna in turn affect how we load our joints. So you can see here when we talk about metatarsalgia, uh, wearing high heels puts a ton of force through that forefoot. So another cause of, of the metatarsalgia can just be footwear. If you're wearing improper footwear, they're either too tight in the toe box or they're putting abnormal amounts of force on those knuckle joints in your foot. Uh, that can cause uh, inflammation and pain. 
And you can see here, it's demonstrated again, what type of shoe would be more comfortable? Well, the one that nicely loads the foot evenly as it naturally should be. So not the one on the left there. So we're gonna talk a few slides about biomechanics of the leg. You can see in this picture here that with a pronated foot, and what that refers to is as our arches collapse and our feet roll inwards, what's gonna naturally happen is our knees will have to inwardly rotate. Same thing happens at the hips. And this is gonna affect the low back by having abnormal pulls in the low back. So by having issues in the feet, it's gonna to translate to issues all the way up the chain. Another demonstration of this is, you know, on this individual here, you can see that only one side he's, had, he's got or she's got um, pronated arches or collapsed arches and, and how that's uh, asymmetrically affecting his whole spine or her whole spine. So we're going to go into a, a few kind of fun facts about the feet now in, in terms of their anatomy. So I think this is pretty interesting. Each foot is 26 bones, so 52 bones in, in total, 66 joints, 214 ligaments, 38 tendons and muscles, and 25% of all the bones in your body are in your feet. So it's really quite complex, everything that's going on. There's a lot of moving parts, and there's a lot of areas where things can go wrong, too. And every step you take is going to affect the joints, the muscles, and the tendons. Uh, above the foot and all the way up to the, the back and, and the spine. So you guys can do this at home if you want, even just if you're able to, standing up and, um, oh, actually, that's the next slide. I got ahead of myself. Sorry. This is just showing what the kinetic chain is. So this is how we load. Um, essentially, the feet are the foundation when you're running, standing, walking, um, as you heel strike and, and plant your foot, it's gonna, um, there's gonna be force going from your heel all the way up to the spine. And that's called the, the kinetic chain. We're gonna use that term later on too throughout this presentation. This is the slide that I, I meant to say. So if, you're, if you can, try standing up and then just collapsing your arches in. So if you let your feet roll in, you should see then that your knees start to roll in too. And so that's a, a great kind of visual uh, demonstration of how issues at the feet can affect the chain further up. Okay, so you can get a small problem in the foot causing a larger problem in the knee, causing an even larger problem in the hip. And Blair and I, in 2019, went to an orthotics conference here in Calgary. And one of the, the, podi or the podiatrists there uh, had this great analogy. He said that the, the feet are the garbage can of the lower body. So if there's an issue, not only can you have issues at the feet causing issues higher up, but if there's an issue in the hip, you're going to start to compensate. And the feet are the first place that has to compensate for that issue. So they, 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 you end up getting quite a bit of dysfunction in the feet. So they can cause problems, but they can also be the result of, of, of problems. Okay, so what does this all mean? When the body moves in a way it's not designed to, the wrong muscles are working too hard and the right muscles are not working hard enough. This leads to muscle imbalances. This leads to repetitive strain injuries. So we've got some common overuse symptoms. And we, when we first started doing this, we used these statistics from the orthotic group. So this is this company that we make orthotics with. And so 26% of people that pursue getting orthotics are dealing with arch or heel pain. Uh, but the really interesting thing is then the next statistic is 20% are not dealing with foot pain, but actually back pain. So it, it's a good, you know, visual of, even if your um, feet aren't the issue, addressing issues at the feet can affect higher up the chain. Then we've got 12% coming for knee pain, and then the, the smaller percentages, percentages coming for actual foot pain, forefoot pain and, and big toe, first toe pain. So here's a, an example of something um, with heel pain. And this is 
when you have plantar fasciitis, that's gotten quite chronic. The plantar fascia attaches via tendon to the tip of that heel bone. And this is the heel bone here. Now you can start to see over time, your body will start to lay down calcium on that tendon to solidify it, to reinforce it, to avoid it from tearing. And that's how we can start to develop bone spurs. And so you can start to see this bone spur developing at the heel, right along where that plantar fascia is gonna be attaching. So orthotics, kind of, I wanted to touch a bit on what they are and, and when they're helpful. So in the previous case of this, this, uh, this individual, orthotics would essentially help by offloading that area, the, the painful area where the heel spur is. You can have orthotics that even have a cutout in the heel so that you're not really pushing through that spot, or they can have an extra heel pad, among other things to correct for that. But orthotics are essentially passive devices that can support your arches. Uh, they can correct how you're loading your feet and thus how you're loading the whole kinetic chain. So the, the knee, the hip, the low back. So remember when we talked earlier today about if you have collapsed arches, it's going to affect higher up. And you can see that pretty nicely here, how on the left, her knee is tracking over, not even over the foot. It should be tracking ideally over that second, third toe. But when you correct for it with the orthotics there, you can see how all of a sudden everything starts to line up nicely. She's supporting her arch. So they help you um, keep your entire kinetic chain in line without straining those, those muscles or creating those muscle imbalances. Now, one thing we do do is at Nose Creek, um, we do orthotic scans. So we have a pressure sensor or a, um, a um, yeah, a 3D pressure pad, which essentially analyzes uh, in real time how you're walking, how you're standing, where you're putting your pressures so that we can make those adjustments. We also take a 3D scan and we send it off to Toronto so they're able to make it right away. At Nose Creek, I'll just put this in real quick here. Um, we, we can do an all-in fee of $550. So we, it includes an assessment, a little bit of treatment, and getting those orthotics. So it's all done at once. Now, we've talked a bit about external risk factors so far with foot pain. External risk factors, as you can see at the bottom, is footwear, orthotics, things that um, are externally affecting your feet. Now, internal risk factors are really the big things that physiotherapy wants to address. These are flexibility, your mobility, strength, strength of your arch, strength of your lower leg, and then balance and proprioception. So one of those physiotherapy treatments we do, and this is very common for plantar fasciitis, is shockwave therapy. Some of you may have heard of this before. It's, it's extracorporeal shockwave. A lot of people think of it like the at first, they, they get confused with Dr. Ho. They think it's an electrical machine, but it's actually not electrical. It's a machine that was originally invented uh, as a medical device to break up kidney stones. So it's got a small little ball bearing that bounces back and forth very quickly, creating acoustic waves that go into the tissues. These acoustic waves are what were made to break up the kidney stones. But what ended up happening is... It was adopted by more of the rehab side of things because we realized it was really effective for breaking up calcium deposits on tendons. So it does a few things. Let's talk a bit about shockwave because I find it really interesting and there's more evidence and research coming out about shockwave. So you can see in the, the picture at the bottom, that's the, the head of the shockwave machine. It's, and that silver part, it's got that small little ball bearing that's bouncing back and forth. So what it'll do is it'll repeatedly for, for thousands of shocks over, over time, so thousands of those acoustic waves, um, break up scar tissue, calcium deposits. It's decreasing muscle tension and reducing muscle spasms. I've, we, well, we've got in here a little bit of kind of the medical description of, of what's happening there. So it's lessening those interactions between actin and myosin, but ultimately the basic way of saying that it kind of loosens up the muscle. Some other things that it happens is it increases collagen production. It improves circulation in the area locally. And it can create new blood vessels. So 
as it's um, the shock waves are going into your tissues, we're getting a breaking up of some of those blood vessels. So your body is responding by increasing the vasculature or the blood vessels locally in that area. All of these things are really important parts of the healing process. So it helps to accelerate that healing process. Now in this picture here, we've got a x-ray of someone that has what looks to be some uh, calcium deposits on the uh, rotator cuff, on one of the rotator cuff tendons. So we can see it in the, the bottom left picture, that little white spot um, just above the arm bone there. I don't think I can point on here, but you can see how it's not there on the right. So when we talked about that, those acoustic waves going into the tissue, it's breaking up those calcium deposits on the tendon and the calcium is reabsorbed in the, into the bloodstream. And so we can pick that up on subsequent um, x-rays and see those physical changes happening. Uh, kind of a, a, a side note, but the interesting thing, when we think of calcium deposits on tendons, the way I at least used to think of it is like a bone essentially growing. But what can start to happen on those tendons where it's isolated like that is it's more like a toothpaste. Um, so it's, it's actually um, pretty easy once we get localized into that area to just break up, disrupt that toothpaste and let the body reabsorb it back up. But in the interim, when it's not being addressed, it's gonna cause quite a bit of pain. So what are some areas that we can treat with shockwave? So relating more specifically to this presentation is plantar fasciitis. So we talked about that heel spur um, and the calcium that can be built along that, that uh, plantar fascia. We can break that up. We've got Achilles uh, a tendinopathy. So uh, that's another area that's relevant. ITB, so iliotibial band friction syndrome. You can get runner's knee or infrapatellar tendinosis, calcification of uh, the tendons in the rotator cuff, tennis elbow, chronic tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, and much more. The, the key with using shockwave, though, the one thing I will say is that you can't use it unless it's been three months since the injury started. So because there's so much acute inflammation happening in those first three months, we have to wait until it's been at least three months. So it's not something... If your foot started hurting today and you just joined this, that we'd be doing tomorrow. We're gonna talk about some of those things you'd be doing. So we're gonna get into some exercises here and some really practical information. We're gonna talk about exercises, but also look at footwear because I think that's a really important thing um, for us to address too with foot pain. So we're gonna take a little quick break here let's say five minutes. So on my clock, I've got 628. So we'll take a break till about 633 so people can run to the bathroom. But I also want you to just grab a few things for this second half here. So I want you to grab a little towel, maybe a tea towel. I want you, if you have it, a tennis ball, um, a lacrosse ball, something like that. And then I want you to grab your, your sketchers, your runners, your, um, yeah, your running shoes. Don't put them on. We're going to just be going through some tests for the running shoes. So let's meet back here in five minutes, and then uh, we'll go through this, this second part. I'll let you guys go now. Just a reminder too, if any of you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box as well, uh, based on the content that you just went through. And uh, yeah, Chris has got lots of great tips for you coming up right away.
This is where we need some of that happy music, Blair. That's right. That's, How uh, was it so far with going through those slides? You usually try to get through that in the first half hour. Was it okay? Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. It was a good steady pace. Good job. Okay. We're going through a, a move um, this weekend. So it's a bit hectic behind me, but I don't have a lacrosse ball. So I only have a bocce ball. That's the only thing I could find. So I'll be doing it. <laughs> That's bocce. okay. You got an Italian so theme tonight. Chris. I can't find anything. Look at my name. <laughs> Both the Chris's are moving this month. Oh, yeah. Wow. Boxes everywhere. Huh. Are you in your new house? Yeah, this is it. Oh, cool. Yeah. This is my new office. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. a lot of work. Yes. You don't realize how much stuff you have until you have to move it. True. True. My dad still lives on the same piece of land that he moved to with his family at the age of six. Wow. He's now 95. He doesn't understand this moving experience at all. No, he wouldn't. Wow. He that's no good. sympathy. Yeah, I bet, hey? Eh? Yeah. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. He just settled into a great spot and he didn't, he's smart, didn't leave. Yep. All right, Chris, it's 6.32. Okay, sounds good. Does it look like everyone's back? If uh, I know some people don't have their cameras on. but June's I got her camera on. She's ready to go. Okay. There you go. Thumbs up from June. She's got her towel. She's, she's good to go. <laughs> good job, June. All right. So let's jump into it. So the first exercise we're going to do is a towel scrunching exercise. Now this is to support or to strengthen the mus muscles in the arch of our feet. So apart from the ligaments in our feet and the plantar fascia, we also have really small muscles called our intrinsic muscles that support our arch. So a rehab exercise you can do to strengthen your arches is the towel stretch. So I'm gonna show you on my end here. And you can repeat it there at home too. This works best if you've got a uh, floor that's, um, flat, not carpet. But if you can see here, I've got my heels on the floor, my toes on a towel, and I'm going to be using my toes to scrunch that towel towards me. So what I usually recommend is we're going to do three times. So once you get all the way to the end of the towel, you're going to straighten that towel back out. And then you're going to repeat again. You're going to start this exercise in a seated position and progress to doing it in standing. You can even get to the point where once you've scrunched it up, you can start to push it back out by extending your toes. So that's the towel scrunch exercise. Now I'll, I'll kind of preface going into the other ones by saying, you know, these are generalized exercises for foot pain. So if you're having dealing, everyone obviously has a different pain experience and is going through different things. So some exercises aren't going to specifically work for them. Uh, it's always best to have someone specifically look at your feet. Uh, so if this is causing you pain, you know, don't do it. It should be a pain-free exercise and should just feel like you're working your arches. So not all these exercises might be work specifically for your individual case. The next one here is the calf stretch. There's actually two on these next two slides. So we've got a calf stretch and an Achilles or soleus stretch. So let's go through both of those. Now to do this one, and you can do this one at home with me, we're going to go up against a wall and hold onto the wall for support. We're going to take our affected leg, bring it back, keeping all of our toes pointed straight ahead and our heel on the floor. So this will look something like this. You can kind of see the corner of the room there. I'm going to hold onto the wall, have my back leg straight, my front leg bent, my toes pointed straight ahead, and then bending that front leg. I'm gonna go until I feel a stretch in my calf region here. 
Now the golden standard for stretching is to do it for a minute total. So we wanna do two sets of 30 seconds. That's a nice place to start. Now the second exercise on the following slide was the soleus stretch. And it's essentially the same exercise except this back leg is gonna be bent. So when you bend your leg, you should notice the stretch is not so high now, but it's actually lower down. You might feel it lower in the calf, or you might feel it more in the Achilles. These are great stretches because we know that one of those modifiable risk factors with plantar fasciitis is tight calves. So these stretches uh, will reduce the tension on that heel bone, the calcaneus, and reduce some of that tension on that plantar fascia. So that is the calf stretch and the soleus stretch. This picture looks a little bit different. I always thought this picture looks a little dangerous. It almost seems like if his hands, if he lost his grip or his sweaty palms, he's going to go flying backwards. So I prefer the way that we just did it. So again, just to, to remind you guys, two sets of 30 seconds. I think that's uh, a good amount for those two stretches. Now in this second one, we've got a specifically plantar fascia stretch. So I think the, the picture is quite descriptive in this one. You're gonna cross your legs. You're gonna pull back your toes, especially that big toe. And you should start to feel a stretch into the bottom of your, your foot, the plantar fascia. You guys can probably guess the parameters for this one. Since it's another stretch, I like to go for cumulative one minute. So let's do two sets of 30 seconds. Now, if you find that any of these stretches are quite hard to hold, you don't have to do two sets of 30. You could do four sets of 15, six sets of 10. As long as it adds up to that minute total, that's really what we're looking for. And another little side note that I'll kind of toss out there, to see a change in stretching, I'm sure it's, it's common sense, you know, it's not gonna change after one day. It's not a quick thing. But if you're consistently stretching, the, the research shows five to seven times a week for a minimum of three weeks, you can make a significant impact in your flexibility. So it's one of those things that you can actually start to change quite quickly. Okay, so now we've got some arch rolling. This is great for if you've got tight muscles, and this is especially good for plantar fasciitis. I'm going to bring the laptop down to the floor to demonstrate this one. Okay. So you should be able to hopefully see my screen. I've got a bocce ball, as you might have heard in the, the break. I, I packed away the tennis balls and everything. So we're going to place that underneath our arch, and we can just roll our foot back and forth. Now, if we want to specifically address that heel pain right back here, we can touch our toes to the floor and get that ball more under our heel. This one's a little too high for me, but then I can just go side to side and really massage where that plantar fascia attaches to the heel. Conversely, I can do the same thing for metatarsalgia at the forefoot. I can get that ball a little bit under my forefoot and massage back and forth. Again, this one's a little bit too big for me, I'd say. When we're talking parameters for lacrosse ball rolling or ball rolling, I think let's keep it simple and aim to do it for about a minute. Okay, now another big thing, especially with, say we're dealing with a neuropathy or a lot of, a lot of issues actually, we start to develop a decrease in our balance. Um, as well as proprioception. And proprioception is really our, our understanding of where our joint is in space. So when we've had an injury, a lot of people will see a disruption in their proprioception. And having poor balance can lead to things like falls, which we, we don't want to have. So in this exercise, what you want to do is not stand in the middle of a room, but go to a nice stable surface like a countertop, a sink. I like sinks because you can kind of wrap your fingers around the edge. And you're going to stand on one leg. When you're ready, you can slowly lower down to say two fingers or one finger and eventually trying to let go and have your hands hovering, not have your hands by your side, but just have them hovering the countertop or sink. Try to balance there for 30 seconds. So at, at Nose Creek, we have kind of a, a few guidelines. Our first test with the single leg balance test is to be able to do it for 30 seconds, eyes open. If you can do that, perfect, you graduate on to the second phase, which is single leg balance, eyes closed. 
which is surprisingly really difficult. If you find one leg balance really easy, try eyes closed, you'll be surprised at how much harder it is. Okay. So this next part here is we're going to talk about proper footwear, good shoes, especially if you're going to the gym or if you're going to go for a long walk. So what you can do is if you've got shoes at home, just, just grab it out right now. Go through these same tests with me to, to test out your shoe. Now, I've got two shoes with me. I've got one that's bad and one that's good. And we're going to go through the same tests on both sides and you'll see the difference. So the first test we're gonna do is the squish test. When we bend through, we're gonna grab at the heel and the toe box, and we're gonna squish. What you should see is that your shoe bends through that knuckle joints, through the forefoot. Now, I think my Nike shoe actually holds up pretty nicely here. It does kind of bend through that forefoot. So, so far they both passed the test. The next test is gonna be the twist test. So I'm gonna take my shoe and try and twist it over. So I'm turning like this, trying to twist it over or twist it the other way. It should have a little bit of give, but it shouldn't be where I can just really rotate that whole shoe over and twist it like I'm uh, wringing out a towel. So this has very little torsional stability. Okay. The next one, actually, correct me if I'm wrong, Blair, I, I've, I've called it something different. The, the squish, uh, the Maybe I've gotten them confused here, but we've got a, a heel test. What I'd always do is you squeeze the heel here and you should have quite a bit of support at the back of the heel. So this shoe here has some good support. Whereas this shoe here, I can essentially just collapse it. There's, I'm almost touching pad to pad here. And then the last one is the rocker roll test. So if I were to place this on a surface, and I push down on the toe box, I should have that heel popping up a little bit. So it's got a little bit of a rocker to it, which helps facilitate um, walking and as we're striding and, and going from heel to toe on your shoe. My other one here, it might pass this test. Yeah, it comes up a little bit. It's again, not great though. I'd say because of those middle two tests, it did not pass uh, our star test. Okay. So actually, oh. so that was the, the um, basis of our presentation. So we actually, we got through a ton of information there, which is awesome. So what we'll do now is we just had a little section on some, some testimonials I think Blair was going to pull up. And then we're going to get into some questions and some prizes. Awesome. Great job, Chris. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to toot um, my colleague's horn here. He's a very humble guy and he doesn't like to brag, but he is an amazing physiotherapist. So I'm going to read a couple testimonials. I even added in a few more if you'll be patient with me tonight. So Maria Lopez wrote, uh, uh, got the best physiotherapy treatment from Chris Radke. Very knowledgeable, professional, and most of all, he makes, or, yeah, he makes his patient feel like he or she is important. Having injuries could be very frustrating and he he is there to listen and to give the proper treatment exactly when and where you need it most. The entire front desk was very helpful. And I, oh, I even got some help from Blair, it looks like. And he was helpful too. The facility was very clean and well-equipped. Thank you, Nose Creek Physiotherapy. So that was from Maria. So then Matt wrote, uh, another five-star review. I have spent the last few weeks getting treatment here. I had the pleasure to have Chris take care of me. Every treatment made massive improvements for me, and I could not have asked for a better experience. I highly recommend Chris for anyone looking for physiotherapy services. Mika said, another five-star review. Chris is an amazing physiotherapist. I would not be doing as well as I am right now, if it wasn't for his expert help repairing my body, I would recommend him to anyone. He's very professional, kind, and uses a variety of different techniques. Then Dora uh, Turk Botillier wrote, Chris Radke is a fantastic physiotherapist and I highly recommend him to help you with an injury or rehab. A detailed explanation of what a muscle was of what muscle was being worked with each exercise and assurance that the exercises were being performed correctly. He has a kind and understanding nature and generally cares about your recovery. Ladies at the front desk uh, and the assistants are fantastic as well. And then Christina wrote, 
Christina Muska. This is the best place in Calgary for physio. I recently broke my ankle and Chris Radke has been helping me recover. He is knowledgeable and explains the reasons for your exercises. He's also patient when teaching you how to do them. Since I broke my ankle, I have been to the clinic, but I have also had video sessions for treatments. These video sessions were excellent. There is no distractions and you can really focus on the exercises. And Chris is able to see what you are doing as well as do demonstrations. What I love about the video sessions is that you don't have to leave the comfort of your home and get the treat and you get the treatment that you need. So good job, Chris. So lots of accolades for you there. Thanks. Bye. Um, you're very welcome. And then um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, I'll get Chris to do a stop share now, Chris, if you can. Oh yeah. And we're going to go through and we'll spin the wheel. So uh, if you can stop your share. Yeah. Thank you. Then I'll share my screen. Uh, this will stop other screen sharing. Do you want to continue? Yes. Okay, and then we're going to find my, oh, hold on here. Uh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, and then we'll share that screen. There it is. Hey, it worked. <laughs> it's the first time I've spun the wheel. Okay, so I'm going to press the button. We've got all the names in there now, and uh, we'll see who's going to win. Oh, by the way, what we're spinning for here is we're going to give away tonight um, probably five free massages uh, for people that have attended. So your odds of winning tonight are pretty good. Better than the lottery. All right, here we go. Sarah, congratulations. Woo All right. Awesome. Looks like it could be Angie. There's Angie. All right, Angie. Congratulations. You just want a 60 minute massage, the best hour of your month. Here we go, guys. Number three. Who's going to win? Round and round we go. And it looks like Lindsay. Good job, Lindsay. All right. Lindsay was the first one to attend tonight. Good job, Lindsay. There we go. Here we go. Number four. Do, do, do. Oh, Shirley Lee, looks like. There we go. Good job, Shirley. Lee. Excellent. Okay, last one. Here we go. One in four chance. Who's going to win? Oh, looks like Christina. Good job, Christina. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now I will stop share for you. Just give me one sec here. There we go. There is stop share up there on my other screen. Okay. There you go, Chris. You can do your share screen now. All right. Well, actually, I didn't have too much uh, else on that uh, previous page, but I was going to say something before we get to the questions. Uh, sure. Or maybe I could just pull it up here, actually. I'll share my screen. Okay. So one thing I was going to say is, is kind of after the presentation today, you have a few options. So one thing you can do is you can ask Blair, send us an email for our free report. We might even send it to everyone. I'm not too sure. Um, but what you'll do is it tells you a bit about foot pain. You'll go through these exercises, try these exercises out for a week. But if you've been dealing with pain for a long time and it's not getting better and the exercises aren't quite cutting it, I definitely recommend coming in to the clinic for an assessment. So you've kind of got a few options. You can do what's called a discovery session, which is just a free 15 minute. We can chat face to face, knee to knee, or over the phone, talking about your specific case, if you'd be a good candidate for physio or maybe more medical testing or more medical review is needed for your case. The other option, if you're really motivated and you wanna just get right into physio, you can definitely um, book an assessment with us. Okay. So I think that was it on the, the presentation. Can you just correct me, Blair? If, do we send the, the free report to everyone? Is that how it works? Yeah, so you can 
you can go to the website and then just click under body parts and then you'll see when you click on the foot one when it opens up to that page on the right side there'll be a free report um, but we'll be following up with everybody via email uh, the, the five winners for sure for the 60 minute free massages and uh, all the rest of the people that attended tonight yeah and we can if you're not quite sure or if you're struggling with trying to download the free report uh, certainly let us know and you could do an and an, um, an email to info at nosecreeksportphysiotherapy.com and that'll get you right to Sandra who basically runs all the, the incoming email off our website. Um, the other thing I do want to forget to mention is that we do a $100 off um, discount sale for orthotics in the month of August tied into Chris's presentation as well. Um, and orthotics basically are for patients I find over age 40. Um, our feet are usually pretty good for about 40 years so for the first half of our life. But after, when we get in the second half of our life, we start to develop a lot of foot pain. And I'm 54 now and I've had a lot of off and on foot pain for about five years now and I can totally relate. Because as Chris was saying in the presentation, our medial longitudinal arch starts to flatten and our metatarsal arch by 40 is basically flat. So it's gone. Um, and so a lot of my older patients will often say, hey, I feel like my foot is growing, Blair. And I always say to them, it's not growing, it's just getting flatter. So it gets longer and it gets wider. And you'll even change shoe sizes. Like I'm recently, now I'm wearing a size 13, like a really wide shoe because my, my toes are really big. So I'm into like a triple E shoe just so my toes can breathe and they're not being crushed and, and squeezed together. Um, that's one of the most common causes of metatarsalgia is improperly fit shoes. So don't wear shoes that are super tight that squish those knuckle joints uh, or pointed shoes as well. That's another common error we see when people come in. And uh, we often in the second session after doing a foot assessment, we'll ask you to bring in your footwear and we look at what you wear at work and what you kind of work wear on weekends. And we go through that star procedure that Chris just went through and we tell you whether that's a good shoe or a bad shoe or whether it's a good shoe, but it's just worn out and needs to be replaced. And we'll often refer you to um, some really good stores in town that we believe in and that we trust that you're going to get good footwear, high quality of shoes from. Um, yeah, okay. so. Um, yeah. Let's, let's maybe go into some questions here too. Sure. Because I see June had a question. And if anyone else has a question, um, pop it into the, the chat there. Um, so June had asked a question, can you kindly advise the best ball to use for the rolling of the arch? There are suggestions of golf ball, lacrosse, tennis balls. Do all of them work the same? Um, and so, you know, I can toss this to any. Uh, so Blair, Chris, and I are all physios. Um, my recommendation, I've, I've always been a fan of the lacrosse ball. Um, it's just firm, easy, easy to use. Um, the other thing is you can use a frozen water bottle, uh, especially if it's quite acute plantar fasciitis. And so that'll feel quite nice on the arch. Uh, do you have any preference, Chris or Blair, for that one? Mine's right here. So I don't know if you guys can see that or not. This is a massage ball. Uh, but it's actually a laundry ball. We call it a massage ball, but you, we sell these at the front desk uh, for I think two dollars. And it's it's not it's not flexible. It's hard, and so those little prickly um, kind of uh, spikes on it. It's almost like it gives you a massage at the same time. So as you're rolling back and forth, it's like you're getting acupressure and a nice little massage of the soft tissue in your foot. So I have one under my desk here every night when I sit down, if I'm sitting, I'll roll my foot on it. It actually feels really good. So it's like you're giving yourself a free little foot massage every night. Um, so if you're, you pop by the clinic, pick one of those up for sure. That, that'd be the one I'd recommend. What would you recommend, Chris? I use those too, Blair. Yeah. And they come in a variety of different colors. <laughs> I happen to have two here that are, yeah, team colors, light green and light blue. Christina asked, what if you have orthotics and you still have foot pain? So that's a great question because having orthotics it shouldn't just be the, the only treatment. It pairs really well with physio. So have, getting the orthotics and then doing stretches, exercise to strengthen your arch, because essentially the orthotics are just supporting the, the foot. Um, if you take off your shoes, you're walking around your house, you're not going to always have the orthotics on you. You're in the shower, things like that. So it is good to, to work on the biomechanics of your foot. Um, any, any input on that one, Blair or Christine? Yeah. So we teach everybody that uh, when they come in and ask for orthotics, um, we sort of say the orthotics are going to help you structurally remove some of the aberrant movements in your foot, but it's almost like we have to cultivate the soil. So if you have a stiff arthritic foot and you uh, just order orthotics and they come in two weeks and you put your foot into that, that stiff foot into the orthotic, you're forcing your foot to go into new positions that it might not be ready for. And so that's where doing some mobilization, gentle manipulation, stretching, strengthening, balance, work, exercise, some rehab, we can actually loosen up your foot, get it 
more flexible and malleable so that when you put your foot into that orthotic, the transition and letting your foot get used to that orthotic is going to be shorter and more successful. So I do think the combination of both rehab and orthotics is the best outcome for sure. For sure. What would you say, Chris? I like to get my thumbs into that plantar fascia and see what it feels like and then tape it into a good position and give immediate rest until they get used to the orthotics. Yeah. So the next question we have here are, what are your thoughts on reflex reflexology for foot pain? Um, so for me personally, it's something that I haven't learned too much about in school. And so I don't know the evidence behind reflexology. Um, you know, any, any input on this one, Christine or Blair? I'm the same. I, I don't know a lot about reflexology. I do know that they're doing acupressure on certain nerves in the foot. Um, it is quite popular and it usually does get good results, but everyone will be different depending on their condition. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, it, it's kind of one of those things where you'd probably have to try it. If it works great, if it doesn't, then uh, I can't really comment on it because they don't really teach us in physiotherapy school about reflexology. How about you, Chris? Do you know much about that? Yeah. To me, I, I haven't seen enough reports on it. I haven't read journal articles, for example, on reflexology. Um, some of the anatomy that they discuss seems to me a little bit far-fetched. You know, if you push on a spot between your big toe and the next one, then you can help your bladder problem. Um, to me, that doesn't line up. So I'd much rather treat it from a scientific you know, point of view. This is what we know to do. Uh, we don't go into areas where the science isn't there. Yeah, I Does think we're, we're focused. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, focusing on the biomechanics more so. Yes. The, the yes. muscles, the joints, the, uh, the, the, the tendons, um, that sort of thing. I'm uh, concerned about reflexology in, in the aspect of we're looking for a quick fix. And, and with... Problems like plantar, fascia, plantar fasciitis, you're not going to get a quick fix. It takes time. You have to learn how to take care of it. And it's better to do that than to hope that somebody putting their, spot, their finger on a magic spot is going to relieve it. I don't find that approach works, just to be honest. Yeah. Awesome. And then uh, Christine just added, I was diligent with stretching at the start, but stopped. So, um, yeah, definitely good to, to keep up the stretching. It might yeah. be the case that, um, uh, you know, there's muscle imbalances. And so strengthening might be the, the route that um, you have to go. So there, there's a few other, other areas, but I would definitely recommend get back on those stretches. Try some of those exercises we did today and see if that can help improve your, your condition. Otherwise, uh, let's definitely follow up, maybe just with a discovery session. Okay. So any other questions? Awesome. So I think um, just for Betty, who just joined, there was initially we had advertised seven and it got changed to six. I think that was probably the mix up, Betty. But don't worry, um, we've recorded this session, so we'll, we'll fire it off uh, to you after. Um, but awesome. I really appreciate everyone attending today. Uh, it, was, it was great to have you and great questions. And of course, uh, my name is Chris, Christine and Blair. And thank you very much. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. We'll see you in the clinic. Good job, Chris. Good job, Chris. Thanks. Great presentation. And uh, yeah, Betty, we'll uh, get you the recording if you want it. Just send us an email to info at Nose Creek Sport Physiotherapy.